Hello YouTube, I'm ABC, and today I'm making another tutorial in addition to my flashlight tutorial. If you haven't watched my flashlight tutorial, there's a link in the description to see that. This tutorial is a bonus addition to it, where I'll show you how to do a little extra feature. In this, in this we're assuming that um, we have a room, and um, we have a view in the room that we want to make, that we want the dark darkness to follow it, so that way we don't have to spawn darkness in, in the entire room. So. I'm going to create a new sprite, SPR player, because it, it'll be a little tricky to do this with the mouse, more work than it needs to be, so I'm just going to go ahead and make SPR player. Um, so yeah, 32 by 32 is fine, and just make a little circle, build circle. Alright, so that's necessary, and then it's also necessary that we create a background for the, for this um, game, because if, uh, if there's no background, then we don't know the, whether the view is moving throughout the world or not. So I'm going to load a background. Let's see. Let's see, what do I have in store for us today? What do I have in store for us today? Um, I'll do this one. Alright, so that background is 1920 by 1080. So I will increase the room size 1920 by 1080, and I'll create a view, enable use of views, visible room starts. I'm going to have follow the player, but I haven't created the player yet. And 640 by 480 should be fine. Alright, so spawn, or actually not spawn. Um, objects, obj player, I'm going to set the sprite, and in the step event, I'm going to take care of the movement. So for movement, I'm going to type on if keyboard check vk right. In that case, you should move to the right. So x plus equal eight. If keyboard check vk left. I want to move to the left, so we decrease our x value by eight. If keyboard check vk up, I want to uh, decrease our y value by eight. <laughs> if keyboard check VK down, I want to increase our Y value by 8. I don't think I've ever written a tech code more times than that code right there. I use it so many times. Alright, so now I'll go ahead and add that to the room and OJ player is in the room and then I'm going to include our background. Alright, awesome. And let's see what else is there. I, have, I need to have it follow the player. I need to have the view follow the player. Okay. And now I'm going to make sure that the darkness is um, uh, rendering based off the player, not the mouse. So I'll change these to obj player dot x and obj player dot y. All right. So that's um, what we're gonna do. And then oh, I better change the darkness size. Almost forgot about that. In the previous tutorial, I'd set it to one to see how slow it would be. Now I'll just set it back to 16. And then I'll just fill it up with black again. All right. Now I'll play. All right. So this is what we want. It's going a little bit slow because um, it's creating so much darkness. But I bet you. That if if we make the make it so the darkness only created within our view area, it'll make the game go so much faster. So um, before we do anything, it annoyed me that the view was panning. Um, so it, weirdly, I want to pan when the player gets to sort. I want the player to be in more or less in the center of the room the whole time. So let's see. I'm going to change H bore and B bore so that it'll pan whenever the player moves, not just once on the edge of the screen. All right. So now. We only want the darkness to be spawned inside the view area. So, in here, I have started at zero, but I want instead I want to start at the x value of the view. So that's view x view. And then here I have started the view room width, but I want to start at the farthest right point of the view. So I'm going to type to find the view x x view. And I'm going to add add on the width of the view. So that's view w view. All right, and then. For our y value, we have started at zero, but I want to start at the 
y value of the view, which is view y view. And here, I want, I, instead of having it go towards the room height, I want it to go towards the bottom of the uh, view, which is view y view plus the height, which is view h view. Okay? And then, one more thing. The way we're going to do this is we're going to have the dark just move with, with the view. And just in case th there's a point where the darkness is shifted a little bit too far to the left, too far to the right, I want to have one more layer around it, around our um, darkness, so that um, even if the view the, takes the darkness a little while to catch up with the view, it won't lag behind. It won't, you won't be able to see past it on the edges. All right. So in order to do that, I'm going to have um, the x and y start at negative 32 sooner, and I'm going to er, negative obj dark dot sprite height. I don't want to hard code it. I want it to be based on the the sprite height and sprite width. So that's why I'm not going to be 32. So sprite height, sprite width, and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to add it to the other ones to the conditions. There we go. That's the idea behind it. Okay, so now OBJ dark. In the creation event, I'm going to create variables x1 and y1. That will be its x and y values in terms of the view. So x1 is going to be equal to x minus view x view. So that'll be how far it is it's away from the x view. And then y1 would be how far it away is from the y, the top left corner of the view, for the y value. And um, so this will show how far away it is in the y direction. This will show how far away it is in the x direction. I want the distance away from the corner of the view to remain the same, always. So I'm going to set x equal to view x view plus x1. I'm going to set y equal to view y view plus y1. So that's how that will work. Okay. Now it should only create the darkness in the room, but although I won't be able to see past the, the view, um, it's a problem, isn't it? <sighs> problem. Didn't recognize this variable, OG dark. What happened is um I was looking for OBJ dark dot sprite width, but the first instance of it wasn't created until after it goes to this loop, so it's impossible for it to find out what OBJ dark dot sprite width is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the sprite even equal darkness even though that even though this isn't um visible in the room. Set it invisible. Even though this isn't visible, we're gonna have it give it a sprite so that's something to reference off of. So we're gonna set OBJ dark dot we're going to say sprite width. There we go. Sorry for that. Okay, so now we shouldn't get that error this time. Alright, so now when we play the game, um, it will only create it within the view area. And um, although we can't notice the difference, hopefully it will notice in the speed. And I can tell you this goes a lot faster than it just now. So, there you go. That's how that works. And, um, yep, yeah, that's that. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I will see you guys next time for the next tutorial. Please write, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed it. See you guys later.